Miami Hurricanes head coach Mario Cristobal admitted something after the game on Saturday night against Florida State, and I think it's probably the biggest indicator of the difference between the Miami program and the Florida State program. I'll talk to Richie about that in today's video presented by BetUS. Richie, Mario Cristobal made a comment after the game, and I tweeted about this, and a lot of people got upset really on both sides. Miami fans thought I was hating, and, and Florida State fans thought that, oh, well, you know, he's just this, that, and the other. He's wrong. He's doing this. He's doing that. Whatever. Richie, I want you to listen to the clip. We'll play it, and then I want to give you my thoughts. I want to get your thoughts, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. All recruits in-state, out-of-state can now clearly see the trajectory of this program versus the trajectory of the other programs. So I don't even I don't even necessarily know if he's right about that. This is such a year to year thing. And so people took issue with or they they didn't love the fact of like, oh, well, he's just got a, a portal QB. He's just, they're just good because of Cam Ward. You know, side note, Cam Ward did nothing last night and we still got our heads beat in, um, giving up like 10 yards of rush. But um, even if that's true. Even if he is just a port, like he just used the portal like we did last year. Even if that is the case, which I don't necessarily think it is. I think the way they've built the trenches, I think the way that they've recruited, they're going to have another top five-ish class again this year, if not better. I don't really think that that's true, but if people need to like lie to themselves and think that that Mario is is not building it the right way, then have at it, make yourself feel better. Um, you know, without Cam Ward, Miami's probably still six and two. Um, and so, you know, that's certainly a better spot than we're in right now. Um, but all that said, I, I think it says a lot about Mario's mindset that when he wins a big rivalry game, he immediately like tries to turn that into rec recruiting momentum, recruiting wins. And that doesn't exist in Tallahassee. And whether you agree with Mario or don't agree with Mario, I think it says a lot about his mindset and a lot of about the mindset that's lacking in Tallahassee. I have no problem with this. Even if Mario's wrong, even if they're back to seven to five next year, this is what a good coach should be doing. And I know Mario's an idiot on the field. He has no idea what he's doing on the field, but he's a good coach when it comes to recruiting. And if people don't like that, then they got to get their heads out of the sand, Richie. Mario is an elite recruiter and he used this moment to do exactly what he should have done. And I don't blame him one bit and I don't disagree with him. You can talk about trajectory. Yeah. 13 and one to one and seven where we're at right now and Miami has been improving every year and he has continued to build, build the trenches the way that you would expect a championship caliber team to do so. No, I don't think they're a championship caliber team, but they're going to have a chance. I, I'd be shocked if they were not in the college football playoff this year, um, expanding the 12 teams, but yeah, like I, and I think the fact that he played at Miami he hates Florida State with a passion. He truly does. And that's what college football is all about. And he continues to, you know, make that message known and taking shots at Florida State and Florida. I think he was taking a shot at them as well, even though they've been doing, you know, fairly decent uh, recently, beating Kentucky uh, in impressive fashion. They're probably going to get brought back down to earth this week against Georgia. Uh, we'll talk about that Wednesday, I'm sure. But yeah, no, Mario, he's doing exactly what he should be doing right now. And, you know, making the most of a 7-0 football team that is number five in the country that is almost certainly going to make it to the college football playoff. They do not play anybody else the rest of the season. Uh, not that we were anyone to, to worry about. Um, you know, the, the, they'll have a tough game in Charlotte, but even if they lose that game, they can still get into to the college football playoff. So they're going to get there. So, yeah, send that message to those recruits. I, I don't blame Mario one bit. And Mike Norvell let this happen. You beat him three years in a row, and now this is where we're at. The tables have completely turned, and you went from the top of the state, the best team by far in the state. Now you're at the bottom of the big three, and that's a problem. We'll get right back to chatting with Richie, but first, let me give some love to our friends over at BetUS. Right now, you can use our code over at BetUS YouTube 150 to get a 150% sign up bonus on your first deposit. Your next two deposits are at 125%. Right now, the Knolls, a three point dog to Mac Brown in North Carolina. They've never lost to Mac Brown in his career. So hopefully, Mike Norvell can stop making history this year and beat UNC. 
But if you want to bet on the Knolls or you want to bet on the Tar Heels, make sure that you're doing it over at BetUS. Those three deposits are up to $2,000, so it's not just a one-time deal. Appreciate BetUS for their support. Yeah, it's hard. It Even if you, and I don't, again, I don't even agree with this, but even if you said like Mario, you know, my, this is Miami's one-year run, this is their 2013 FSU, and they're just going to fall back down to earth next year. That might be the case. I don't even really think it is, and I know that Cam has a lot to do with it, and if they didn't have it, but like, you, if, if you're a transfer quarterback, like, do you not want to go play there now? <laughs> like yeah, after seeing what Cam, you know, like, let's be honest with ourselves. Yeah. There, there may not be another yeah. Cam Ward, but like, I would go play there if I was a transfer quarterback, especially with the way they pay and they've always got an easy schedule and there's a lot of talent around him. That said, even if he's wrong, even if they're seven and five again next year, like where was Mike with comments like this? Like Mike never did this. We at, were 13 at and and three. Yeah. Mike. Mike could not translate winning into recruiting. And we thought, we thought like, I remember back in 21, 22 and 20, 21, 22, we thought like, okay, well, we just need to start winning games and it'll start to translate. And then at the end of 2021, you lose your best recruit. And then at the end of 2022, you go 10 wins and you still have the class kind of fall apart at the end. And then at the end of 2023, you miss on your top four targets after going 13 and 0. And it's just like, man, they're, there just isn't really a focus on recruiting in Tallahassee. Mike just does not care about it. And maybe he will after this year, maybe he will say like, oh, well, that kind of sucks that I didn't focus on this major part of my job or hold people accountable for what I have to do in bringing in talent. Um, we just lost another commit today. CJ Wiley, four-star wide receiver, a guy that everyone said, like, you can't lose this guy. Like, oh, you lost the first guy. You lost the second wide receiver. You lost McCutcheon. You lost this guy. No worries. You just can't lose Wiley. And what do they do? They lose Wiley because who would want to play for this staff? You've got NFL. You've got guys in the NFL right now that are actively telling recruits, don't go there because this guy can't develop me or because that guy can't develop me. Like that's an actual thing that's happening. And so your, your staff is so bad that guys in the NFL, when, when active recruits are asking, Hey, what about Florida state? What about the, they're being told, don't, don't go there. If you want to get developed, Hey, they're nice people. They'll pay you. The NIL is good, all that. But if you want to get developed, don't go there. And so I'm not BS. I'm not making that up. I'm not going to call out any recruits names or anything like that, but like, that's an active thing that's happening. And Mike Norvell has allowed that. And Mike Norvell knew about that back in January. Mike Norvell has allowed that to stay on his staff. And so yeah, th they get what they get. Mario cares about it. Mike doesn't. And that to me, that's the biggest difference. And that's why after the biggest win, you know, they beat Clemson last year. Clemson was a terrible team. After the biggest win that Mario's had in Hard Rock Stadium as a coach, the first thing that he says, the reminder that he gives everybody, the thing that he wants to leave with everybody is come to Miami. Look at those two programs. Look how we beat the dog crap out of those two programs. Remember, they beat Florida by 30 as well. Yeah. Now, they've done this to two programs now in the same year. Obviously, they beat the tar out of USF as well. But they've done this to now, what, three big time programs in the state. And if they'd have played UCF, I'm sure it'd have gone the same way. And that's the first thing Mario says is you want to come here, play here. And Mike, I'm not, Mike never did that, you know? And nope. I, I don't know why I know that's not his personality. And listen, I, I don't like Mario Cristobal. I don't, I think he's a snake. I think he's a, I, I don't even think he's a great person, but I mean, he can recruit and he cares about it and he holds his coaches to a standard. And uh, that standard, you know, the standard is the standard. The standard is being held down there in Miami because Mario, yeah, to, the, to that point, Mike, Mike does up, not hold. Mike yeah, does not Mike, hold coaches accountable at all. Yeah, Mike and puts up with the crap. Did. Mario doesn't. Mario fired both. Richie Mario fired both of his his offensive and his defensive coordinator after year one. He fired both of them. Yeah, he said this is not good enough. We went where they go five and seven. They lost by forty two to Florida State at home. And he, he yeah. said, "You're both out of here. You're both out." And so, yeah, not Mike though. It doesn't matter how bad you are at your job with Mike. You know, it, you it, back up the trailer, boys. We are hanging out. Kick your feet it, up. We are hanging out. Doesn't matter how many games you lose. Doesn't matter how bad your recruiting is. We are hanging out. And so, yeah, the standard's not here. The standard's down in South Florida. Yeah, the, the, there is no standard when it comes to recruiting for Florida State. You get serious Jimbo, specifically when I think Rick Trickett vibes, right? Rick Trickett, he was a hell of a good coach. Like, there was no denying that. But no high school, no elite high school offensive lineman wanted to play for him. And Jimbo just let him coast for years until he left. 
And then when he leaves, you know, things finally get a little better. And that, that's where we were in that 2017 season, which I thought was the worst season in Florida State history, which <laughs> I was wrong. Hello, 2024. Um, but yeah, like, you know, Jimbo just kind of let his assistants, Lawrence Dossey, for the longest time, was a receiver coach who Jimbo just let coast along. And, you know, you cannot be loyal to people in business. And I don't care how good things are. Yeah, they were. Okay, we won the Natty in 2013. That was Jameis Winston. Shout out Jameis Winston for the Browns beating the Ravens today. That was awesome. Um, but, you know, even if you're a department, say you're a head of a department at, at a job, and even if things are going well, you still need to identify the weak links and either work them up or work them out. And Mike Norvell is not showing that, that he, that's in him. And I, I think that's going to be his downfall. And that's why I do not think he will be the head coach at Florida State in three, four years. Uh, four years might be a bit generous. Yeah, it, it'd be tough to it'd be tough to see him here in four years, right? Unless he can really figure some stuff out. So frustrating. And again, Florida State loses another recruit. They are, I think, recruiting. I think they have the 48th best recruiting class. I will say that is two ahead of UFs. So a coach that is absolutely seemingly going to get fired this year. Yeah. Um, you are ahead of him by two spots. So congratulations, Florida State. So what are your thoughts on Mario's comments? Again, I don't necessarily think that he's saying anything wrong here. I think this needs to be the mentality. You might say he's a cornball. You might say it's kind of hokey, whatever. It doesn't really matter. That is the right mindset. And it's the reason that his team was so th more, so much more thoroughly impressive than Florida State's was. And hopefully it's something that Florida State changes. Again, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Appreciate BetUS for their support. We'll talk to you guys soon. Go Knowles.